Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a first person shooter in Unity 5 and welcome to episode 21. So this episode we're going to carry on where we left off last time and we're going to add another animation to our zombie here to simulate him dying and then we're going to move on to some bullet holes. So before we go any further, um, this zombie in particular is, it, it, this style I should say, is um, what I'm aiming towards with the program that we do in this uh, tutorial. If you've got a different zombie, then you'll obviously need to modify what we do slightly because it may not be exactly the same. But as I say, if you're using this zombie that you've downloaded from the website, then everything we do here is going to be perfectly fine for you guys. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to go to the zombie in our um, assets down here. So zombie enemy. And if you remember, we duplicated these particular um, animations down here from the actual prefab itself. So the one we're going to want to duplicate now for this one is the dying one. So hold control, press D, and we need to set it as legacy. So we go to debug and click legacy and then head back to normal. So this is going to work pretty much the same way as uh, last time. So on the enemy itself, we just need to change the animation size to four. And then it'll duplicate the element number two into element three, which is attacking. So we just need to drag and drop that dying one onto there. So the process of what's going to happen here is when the enemy dies, it will play this animation. But the way the animation works is it kind of sinks the zombie into the ground. Not all animations would do that. It's just the way the zombie is made. So let's sort this out. What we'll need to do is we need to go to our scripts and go on to the enemy script. Uh, I did say, I think it was last tutorial that we'll be doing some C sharp. Um, this tutorial we're going to be doing a bit more Java, but that's because we've already written the scripts in Java. Obviously, if you guys have gone one step further and converted it to C sharp, that's fine. But from this point onwards, we're going to try to do as much C sharp as possible because I want you guys to learn both languages. So in the enemy script, we need to add in an extra variable. So var, it's going to be called the zombie and it's going to be a game object. So in the function update where we've got if enemy health is zero, what we need to do is within here, we now need to uh, disable the script that we've got called zombie follow. And we need to kind of play the animation of dying. We also need to kill off the zombie. But to kill off the zombie, we have to, what we're gonna do is we'll create a separate function. So we can make things a little bit more fun. So within the update, after um, we've got destroy game object, let's, Mark that out with a double slash for now. And what we need to do is we need to put this dot get component dot, uh, sorry, open bracket. And in there we put the zombie follow in quotes, close bracket dot enabled equals false. So just to clarify what that is, on the um, the on the actual zombie script itself, we have the zombie follow script. This is the AI that we created a couple of tutorials ago. So um, this enemy script here is going to reference this script and turn it off. So it's stop all the AI about the zombie is going to stop happening as soon as the enemy health is zero. At this point, we need to get the animation of dying. So it's the zombie dot get component dot open spiky bracket and it's animation close spiky bracket open close bracket dot play and in quotes and brackets we put dying. So whatever your death animation is for your zombie or your enemy or whatever, you would put that name in there. And then semicolon. And the next thing we're going to do is create a new function. And let's just call this end zombie. So we end the zombie's life, basically. So function end zombie 
open close bracket, open curly bracket, and we'll have yield wait for seconds and in brackets I'm going to put the number three and I'll explain why now. The reason I have three is because the animation itself takes three seconds for the zombie to kind of play out its animation. So the dying animation is three seconds long. So after three seconds what we need to do is place this destroy game object here in the end zombie function and close curly bracket. So that's all that function is. The reason we don't put it here is because we have this yield wait for seconds and we can't have that within an update. So we have to call that function from the update itself. So we just do end zombie, open close bracket, semicolon, and save that script. So over here now, when we clicked on the zombie enemy 01, we should see that we now have the zombie. Just do that zombie onto there. And now let's test this out. So let's press play and let's go and pick up a gun. Let's take the gun and now let's shoot the zombie. And there we go, the zombies died and disappeared. So obviously you can have different things happening here. You can like I say, depend on which zombie you have. If it's this exact one, there's different things you could do. If you have more advanced zombie, again, it depends on the animations and what you do with it. So the next thing we're going to do is let's create some bullet holes. So at the moment, if we have our gun and we fire at, let's say, the wall, nothing actually happens. And if a real gun were to fire at a wall, you would obviously expect something to happen. So we're going to do this by creating a really cool bullet hole. Firstly, what we'll do is in textures, drag and drop this bullet hole texture. Now, this isn't something I have um, made per se. This is something that I have managed to find on Google. So I am going to put it up on our website, but keep in mind that all rights to this are from the creator, um, which I sourced through Google. I can't quite remember who it was, but you should be able to find this image through Google. So to do this, what we need to do is kind of create a cube which contains a plane inside that which holds the bullet hole itself. It may take a little bit of um, tinkering with to get it just right, but we'll see how it goes. So game object, and let's go on 3D object and cube. I'm going to right click, rename, let's have this as bullet hole. So the cube itself, we need to get rid of the, um, what should we get rid of? The mesh render, because we don't actually need that. And let's decrease the size to what we'd expect to find in a bullet hole size, as it were. So let's decrease the scale to um, 0.25 by 0.25 by 0.25. So it's a pretty small cube. Next in this bullet hole, right click, 3D object, and plane right there. So obviously we need to change the size of this plane as well. So 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. Seems like it's probably a little bit too big. Yeah, so let's decrease it again to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that fits in the cube. That appears to be just fine. So the texture, what we need to do is we need to apply that to the plane. And to get it looking more like a bullet hole, we need to change the shader. So if we go down here to shader and change it to particles, and let's go on multiply. Now I'm hoping if we zoom in, we should be able to see that that's what the bullet hole will look like when it's imposed on whatever object our gun will hit. Maybe a little bit small, this bullet hole, but we'll see as we get a little bit further in anyway. So to do this perfect, we need to go into our gun damage script. So scripts and it's, uh, where is it? I think it's handgun damage. That should be the one. Okay, so as far as I can tell, let me see, because is this going to work? So we're firing off this shot and we need to have a raycast hit another one i should say but with a, a different um yeah okay so let's see how this goes i just want to check we do have the right script here because there are a couple of different ones i think it should work with this one 
So let's do var, and I'm just going to call it hit. Just real simple. And that will be a ray cast hit. So although we have a ray cast here, we kind of want to do another one further down. So as we go further into this, I'll explain a little bit more. The next thing we need is going to be the bullet hole itself, which I'm just going to call the bullet. And that's going to be a game object. And to do this, if we go further down into message down here, what we need to do is create another raycast. So if, and in brackets, physics dot raycast and in brackets transform dot position and then comma and then transform dot transform direction so it's pretty much the same as what we've already created with the previous uh, raycast uh, dot four sorry vector three dot forward and then the uh, variable we created up here which we called hit obviously you can call that whatever you want i'm just trying to be simple so we can get things moving a bit quicker and then within that if statement we need to instantiate the bullet itself at the point of where this raycast is touching something so instantiate and in brackets the bullet so we've defined the uh, object that we want to instantiate by the way instantiate means to create or recreate and uh, we need to put hit dot point so we need to define where it is and the rotation of how it is going to look once it hits that point so quaternion helps if i spell it right doesn't it Quaternion dot from to rotation and in brackets vector three dot up comma hit dot normal close bracket close bracket semicolon and then close that if statement so as I say all we're doing here is once we are firing our gun and we're checking all the distance and we're doing what we need to do we're then casting, technically casting another ray cast at the exact same second, just to check that we can actually have a bullet on this, and obviously we can. So it, th it then creates the bullet on the point of where the ray cast has hit. So save that script, head back into Unity. And we need to go to, I think it's our M9, or is it our first person controller? Not quite sure where we put the um let's do a search let's try gun mechanics there we are so on the gun mechanics in our first person controller that was where we have the um script itself the handgun damage and what we need to do now is place the bullet hole into the bullet as a game object and now i'm going to bring this bullet hole way off screen down here so we don't actually see it but what I might do is I might increase the size to 0.5 by 0.5 by 0.5 just to make sure this works. So let's press play. And let's go and pick up a gun. And now let's fire at the wall. Okay, so we can see it does work, but it is glitching ever so slightly. To get around that, all we need to do is on the bullet hole and the plane, we just need to increase where the position is of this bullet hole. So if we put the Y position as, let's say, 0 0.05, maybe a bit high, put a 0, 0.015. So it's raised slightly. So it should sit just nicely on the wall now. So let's save our project and try once more. I keep forgetting to press E there. My fault. <laughs> Okay, so we've got the gun, there we go. So as we can see, we now have bullet holes. Now, one thing to note here is, can you see these bullet holes here appear to be floating? We can solve that quite easily. The reason they're floating is because they're not quite hitting the object they should.
So we need to go back to our gun mechanics on our player. And let's just check which way he is facing. So he is facing the wall. So we just need to pull out our gun mechanics to the tip of our gun. So if we set our gun as active and then pull our gun mechanics to about there and then turn off our gun once again, press play. And that should solve the problem of having our bullet holes just randomly floating and getting stuck. There we go. One more thing which may be of use is to turn off the box collider for the bullet hole game object itself. So I'm going to save my project there. And that is pretty much how we create a bullet hole. And it, it's quite effective. It's simple, but effective. So next episode, we're going to start looking at some environmental design. So this means things like um, the, the terrain. We'll look at some nice texturing on there to make it appear more like a level that you would expect. And one thing I'm not quite happy about at the moment is our health just as text up here. I'd like to have some kind of health bar down here. So when we get hit by our zombie here, we'll actually <clears> have <throat> some health come off us and it'll be shown in a health meter. So that's what we're aiming for in the next episode. So guys, until then, enjoy Unity and I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.